dancers. Welcome back to Conversations with the Pros. Tonight we are speaking with Italian-born dancer Virginia Lenzi, dancer with American Ballet Theater. I'm so excited to be here. So Virginia, why don't you tell us about yourself? Hi everyone, I'm Virginia Lenzi and I'm a dancer with American Ballet Theater. I'm originally from Milan, Italy, and I've started dancing when I was about three years old. I actually stopped when I was around eight because I wanted to try everything else. Um, so I tried everything else until about the age of uh, 12. And then at 12, I was like, okay, I want to dance. This is what I want to do with my life. And I, I then joined La Scala Ballet Theater in Milan. And I stayed there for about six years. And then I did the ABT summer intensive and got a scholarship and then moved to New York when I was 16. And from there, I did uh, the school, and then I joined the studio company, and then I became an apprentice, and, and then I joined the company. Uh, wonderful. So you really have followed that track of... <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So, Virginia, why don't you talk to us about your relationship with food as a young dancer and how it's really shifted to your professional career? Well, my relationship with food has really shifted during the years. I think one of the challenges for me at first was navigating my food allergies. And I think when I was younger, that really kind of stopped me. I felt like a little bit of an outsider <laughs> because I had food allergies um, and I had to prepare my own food all the time. And I still, I still do actually. So I have to always, you know, I have a plan to what I'm going to eat. And especially if I go out and, um, and then, so then from there, when I went to New York, it, I came here when I was uh, 16, I was by myself. And that was definitely something I had to navigate, the food situation too. Um, especially, I think it wasn't, it wasn't easy because I was young and I also had food allergies and I had to try and find the right balance to be eating enough because we were dancing way more hours than I was used to. And then at the same time, just being able to um, enjoy the foods and cook by myself, like for myself at such a young age. Um, so I, uh, I had to navigate that a little bit. And um, until the, I think until about like six years ago, that's when I started to really get to know my body and get to know myself. And I think confidence and loving myself shaped my relationship with food a lot of the times. And um, yeah, because being, you know, having restrictions, I have food allergies today, eggs and nuts, and having restricted those my whole life, I think I went into a partner pattern of restriction when I was younger, because I was just uh, navigating all of this by myself. So I was like, okay, let's do, you know, what everybody is doing. <laughs> And I was looking outside uh, a little bit too much until I realized, you know, my body is my body and everybody is different and everybody needs different things. So I think that was the main realization and just not being afraid to ask for help if I needed help in sense of managing uh, the food and the quantities, especially during, you know, long shows, long hours. Uh, I think that was the main, the main thing, realizing that I actually needed help uh, figuring that out and asking for help. Yeah, and food allergies in of themselves, you know, can be pretty isolating for some dancers, especially with navigating, you know, what to bring to studios and being a young dancer who's traveling abroad for the first time at 16 years old, that's a lot of responsibility. And I know a lot of dancers right now post pandemic are have traveled for their summer intensives and yeah. ex experiencing probably the same thing a, a huge amount of responsibility that is really thrown on them um, in regards to navigating you know how to make sure they're eating enough but then also being able to decipher between all of the mixed messaging out there in regards to various food restrictions whether that be restrictions like allergies that, you know, someone has to follow for the sake of their health versus the most diet related restrictions, which really just lead us to unsustainable habits around food. So I give you so much 
compassion and credit for having to have navigated that at such a young age. Yeah, and I think that, uh, you know, traveling and being in a summer intensive is always a little bit tricky in general, I think, for everyone. And But for me, what really, you know, I think what really helps is just really asking for help to, like, somebody that is a professional, 100%. Do not go look things, you know, on the internet. <laughs> Those diet no <laughs> absolutely it's just like ask for a professional and um and you'll navigate that with the professional that can advise you on what's best for you um and your type of body your restrictions your food allergies anything that will be that will be good and with the company we travel so much so i had to navigate that lots of you know hotel room <laughs> meals lots of that uh so it came a lot for me like from planning it was a, it's a huge part of my, my food uh, related life. Yeah, well, you bring up such a good point. Number one is really knowing where you're getting your nutrition education from. And I say this a lot, but anybody can just go onto Google and get the information that they seek in regards to um, any one type of uh, food rule or, you know, telling us what we quote unquote should or should not eat. So it's so important. And thank you for reinforcing this, but it's so important that dancers actually turn to trusted credential uh, sources when it comes to something like food and like body, especially because of the vulnerability that dancers face in regards to perfectionism and eating disorders and dis disordered eating. So I agree that really seeking professional licensed um, resources is so essential. And I'm hoping to provide resources <laughs> for dancers in that realm. Um, <laughs> now, with that being said, a lot of dancers face, and you've spoken about several challenges that you face in regards to, you know, coming abroad at a young age. And it sounds like having to travel a lot is also a challenge. How would you say you work to overcome that? Is it really by relying on professionals? What are some ways that you overcome some of these challenges in regards to like navigating how you're fueling your body for your career? Uh, I think... So what I did, especially with travels, uh, Afro, yeah, definitely professionals. And also it takes time. It takes time and trials, honestly. It's also, even for me, it's a, it's a journey because you never, uh, you never know how your body's going to change and maybe your different habits are going to change. So it's always kind of a research. <laughs> and I, I, for me, for travels, well, definitely the, the planning has been helping and um, I always have to plan because of my food allergies, but definitely, definitely that. And surrounding myself with friends, I think that's, that's also super important because friends create a community and being able to, you know, eat with them and enjoy food with them. I think that was really, it's always part of my life and um, I feel, you know, very comfortable with them. So really finding friends that you can feel comfortable with and they're also comfortable around food, so. Yeah, that is such another great point in regards to seeking community, which by the way, when you do have food allergies, like I was saying earlier, what could be isolating, right? Any type of food restriction, whether it's like intentional or unintentional, food allergy related or not, really could be seen as isolating. So you creating a community for yourself of like-minded dancers who are comfortable around food, comfortable in their bodies, is one of the best tools for you to also stay confident and comfortable. And another point that you mentioned that I just wanna reinforce is this idea that it takes time. Uh, one thing that I like to reinforce with dancers is that our relationship with our bodies and with food it's always a working relationship. It's not like we achieve this, like achieve this quote unquote healthy lifestyle or body or whatever it might be. And we just check it off our to-do list, right? It's, it's a constant working relationship. And I think coming to terms with that and realizing that this is something that you're always learning and always changing and always um, learning through trial and error is something that's so important and sounds like you really have put into practice. Yeah, I mean, especially during the pandemic, I think it forced us, it, it forced everyone to like look at life and well, our relationship with food as well in a completely different way because we weren't in our normal schedules. We weren't 
doing our, you know, seven hours a day and uh, traveling and touring. We were suddenly at home and trying to like take class. So it just like, it's a journey as well because you have to let yourself, you know, be like, be going with how life is going as well and adapt to the different situations. Yeah. And be flexible, right? Because I think the pandemic, like you said, showed yeah. us that at, at any point in our lives, things can be turned upside down. The pandemic really tested the limits of the entire industry. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. And I think, like, for me, when I had to navigate my food allergies in general, I feel like feeling more comfortable with myself helped me just be more comfortable around food, around others. It just, like, all came from how I feel about myself yes. and then if I feel comfortable then there is no way I wouldn't feel comfortable in like uh, in a situation so um, that's also something that has helped me just developing that uh, sense of self and trying to pick, to to be as comfortable as I can and accepting myself and my body in all the way that it is and I think um, and I think that's yeah it's it's always a journey but I think that's that's what's been helping me a lot. <laughs> yeah. And that comfort, in my opinion, really boils down to confidence. And a lot of dancers struggle, especially younger dancers struggle with building that confidence, especially in an age of social media, where we are constantly logging, logging on and like, and seeing, you know, various dancers, various poses and tricks and whatever it might be. And it's just so easy to compare ourselves, but trying to stay true to yourself and work on aspects of building body confidence is in my opinion what feeds into that idea of like building trust with ourselves and like you said comfort with our bodies to the point of body acceptance and or you know at least body neutrality no exactly and uh, i mean you said it uh, in uh, in the year of social media there is so much comparison that you can just go online and scroll and be like oh that person is better than me or this is you know but it's uh it's not true and like everyone is beautiful in their own ways and we are all different which i think is what makes us unique and embracing that uniqueness is what is gonna help you excel the best you can in your own life so absolutely so one question I have for you, one thing that I struggled with as a young dancer was this idea, and that's something that's really encouraged in the dance world, is having this very hyper-focused approach to our studies as a dancer. And one thing that I've learned with time is the importance of balance within our lifestyles and having more of a multifaceted approach to our lives and not necessarily being so hyper-focused in dance. So my question to you is, how do you find that balance in your life? Like, have you picked up additional hobbies or, you know, what, what are your thoughts on that? I, I love this question because <laughs> I, <laughs> I, um, I too struggle with that for a little bit in my life. And, you know, when you're young, of course, and trying to get into a company, that's like your whole focus. So that's, you want the job and that's where you want to get to. And once I joined the company, I was like, oh, this is wonderful. This is amazing. I mean, the, in the company I've always wanted to be in, but I feel like there is a part of me that um, I think just being a dancer wasn't, wasn't enough. And I felt like I had to do something else. And so I started, I volunteer with an organization and I started doing that first. Uh, I volunteer with Candlelighters New York, which is an organization that um, helps and supports families that have cancer. And, and from there, I found out how powerful dance is in everyone's life and not just on stage, you know, because when you're a dancer and you're on stage, it's harder to see what the audience is feeling. And, and I, and and so by volunteering and doing events with them and using dance, uh, to either teach them or do a little showing. I just really saw what how powerful dancing can be to anyone's life. <laughs> you know, everyone, even professional and professional, like everyone benefits from dancing. And so I started, I started doing that. And from there, I uh, am a true believer that arts can create social change. And I have done different things. I'm part of this other organization that's called the International Youth Conference. And it's a conference 
that focuses on the world that the the problems that the world is facing and i love to connect arts with that <laughs> so in the conference we speak about poverty uh, education vaccine inequality and um, different climate change different things and and then i just did a training actually with my lips uh, this organization that connects dance with social change they use dance a particular method of dance to help kids reintroduce kids in school that are maybe underprivileged or in uh, underprivileged communities and help them through dance to integrate integrate them into education which i think is uh, you know so important and really seeing what dance can do in everyone's life and how it can help people in so many ways uh just really made me uh i mean love dance even more so <laughs> so i think yeah that's that's kind of what i do outside of yeah. dance and i'm also studying in college too ah very nice that's so beautiful by the way and so inspiring i love how you are still taking your passion for dance but uh not necessarily only focusing on dance for yourself or like for the performance aspect of dance uh, in that regard and actually taking it into the world of you know social injustice and how it can bring communities together and just increase access to like you said this wonderful art form that can do so much good for communities um if they have the access to it so that's really wonderful Yeah and I think a lot of the times dancers can be perfectionists I mean we yeah and um I am one myself I think I uh yeah <laughs> and just seeing how what dance can do for others made me come out of that a little bit more because it wasn't about me anymore it was just more about the art form itself which I think makes you like having things outside of dance makes you understand how dance is a part of your life and of course it's what you do and it's a part of who you are but it doesn't fully shape who you are so everything that happens in the studio needs to be taken in a way that um you know if you get something like that's a correction or something it doesn't destroy your whole world because <laughs> ultimately it's um uh, we're dancing because we are passionate about it and because we love it and i think that's and finding out that dance can do so much more for others make you makes you understand that really uh it's more for for the art form and um yeah that's kind of what i realized what helped me you know get past the perfectionism and like getting in your head a little bit too much i love that virginia because that is a really cool way a really cool channel of like dealing with perfectionism while not necessarily leaving the art form that you love. So, you know, one thing with my own personal self is that in order for me to deal with my own perfectionism as a dancer, I actually had to take myself out of the dance world for a bit before I was able to go back and have a more multifaceted and broader broader perspective of my own abilities in class. But what I love about what you're explaining is actually taking the passion that you have and uh utilizing it in other ways, in other ways that it's not just about what you're doing in class. It's not just about your abilities on stage, but actually like bringing it like I said to the larger community um in other ways. That's that's really cool. Yeah, because ultimately you work on yourself to, you know, have the best performance ever. but then it's yeah. also a relationship between you and the audience it just goes mm -hmm. both ways and i think sometimes we forget about that just to get back into the nitty gritty of you as a dancer any fun pre-performance rituals that you have now that you guys are really getting back to performing um i think i i mean i usually just do my makeup uh <laughs> and my hair and then i i usually hang out you know where when we're at the mat we have a but usually when we tour as well we have a dressing room and i usually love to hang out with my friends i don't like to just like keep you know remember the choreography and try out so many times i just want to like kind of distract myself and so i that's my favorite part of like pre performance preparation it's just being there with my friends and just talking and um just kind of get 
our minds out of the performance. And then I love to like, I don't know, spray my perfume, but that's just something I use, like always do. Um, that's, and yeah, that's, that's basically it. Yeah, I love that. That's really cool. Also, <laughs> taking yourself out of the performance, because once you get to, to the Met, right, I mean, you've done each ballet how many times before, right? <laughs> you know the choreography. Um, so I think taking yourself out of the choreography for a bit, just for that mental break, is something that's really helpful and really cool. <laughs> so Virginia, my final question for you, how would you define what it means to be the healthy dancer? A healthy dancer for me is somebody that loves themselves. Uh, I think that's one of the the key things to being a healthy dancer and surrounding yourself by people that support you and are there for you. And yeah, that's that's for me a healthy dancer. I love that having that self trust and of course in my opinion, one of the biggest words here is self-confidence, right? And being able to build that confidence in yourself, in the studio, out of the studio, and in just all aspects of your life. Yeah. Virginia, thank you so much. Your insights were wonderful. It's been such a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you for having me.